we're going to look at a model on how we actually take in the world around us, how we process information, take it in and store okay, it. So now, how do we actually take in the world around us? What we see. Yes. Right, so we take in the world around us through what we see. Yeah. Yes, through what we hear. Feel. Sense. Yes, feel, sense. Oh, smell. Smell, yes, another very evocative sense. Yeah. Taste. And taste, yes. So, we experience the world around us through our five senses. Through what we see, what we hear, what we feel, what we smell, and of course, our gustatory sense, what we taste. Mm. Now, at any one point in time, you have available to you upwards of two million bits of information. That's a huge, a vast amount of information available to your five senses at any point in time. So we've got this huge amount of information coming in. In order for us to be able to manipulate within our physical environment, we have to make some sense out of it. So we do that by filtering in the information. And one of the most important filters that we have is deletion. That is, we simply just delete most of it. Most of it that's not relevant to us in this particular moment. It's an incredibly effective tool and we do it really, really well. So if I say to you now, how's your right foot doing in your right shoe? Fine. Fine. You all aware of that? Were you aware of it a moment ago before I said that? No. no. So it's incredibly effective, except when it isn't. We become so good at it that we just tend to go a little bit overboard with it. And I'm sure you've all experienced a situation where you've been looking for something for hours, only to find eventually that it's right in front of you. So that's how effective and how good we are at deleting things. Another thing that we do to make sense of it all is we generalize things. We only have to hear a little bit of something and we complete it. We only have to see a bit of it, we complete it. We just generalize everything. Somebody just has to start a sentence, we know what they're going to say. We do it incredibly well and it's a shorthand. We look at a door, we don't have to reinvent the door, we discover it in order to get through it. We know we use this handle, we'll be able to go in. We can generalize that across lots of other different shapes of doors. We do it so well. But funnily enough, they did an experiment just to see how strong and absolute our generalizations are. They did an experiment where they hid the hinges on this side of the door. And if you pressed that side of the door, it would swing open quite easily. They repeated the experiment again and again, and not one person was able to move through that door. That's how strong our generalizations are, and how set we are in them, that it wouldn't even occur to us to consider pressing on that side of the door. So they're incredibly brilliant, except when they're not. Another thing that we do very well is we distort information so that it fits with the way we're feeling at the time. Now an example of that would be is if I've seen a particularly scary movie or I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable and recall as a child and then you hear a bang bang and you know that it's a branch on the side of the house but you could actually make it seem like footsteps approaching and getting louder to boot. But we distort the information according to how we're feeling. So, we delete, generalize, and distort this huge amount of information that we're receiving at every moment, and we do it in our own unique way, based upon our beliefs about the world around us, our values, and there's a few others too that I'm not going to go into now, but those are the higher order ones. We actually, our beliefs and values will inform the way we delete, generalize, and distort, as will our memories, past experience, and um, our own preferences.
So we've got all this information coming in, huge, vast amount of it. We're filtering it in our own very unique way, and then we store our unique map of the world around us. We store it in terms of pictures. We store it in terms of the sounds, the feelings, smells. Again, incredibly evocative. I don't know whether perfumes or certain smells can just take you back to different places. And tastes as well. What we also do at that point when we store it is we have our own little narration. We have our own little commentary going on for all of our experiences as it's happening. So we actually word the event internally with self-talk. And that becomes our own unique map of what we've experienced. All this information coming in, our own unique filtering system, and we have our own unique map of the event or the experience. And that's the really key and critical part because we all assume that actually everybody has experienced it exactly the way we have. So now if I said to you, map of London, I'm in London, you'd think I was a bit barking, wouldn't you? Right, because I'm not in London. That is the map, but the map is not the territory. So whilst we think that our unique map of an experience is the experience itself, it's not. It's really important because we assume that everybody is living in our map of the world. We forget that actually people have very unique versions of the world and that is basically how we're creating the world around us. We're creating our own reality just with our own perceptual filters.